the resources of general theory of relativity are so widespread and abundant that for a learner it often becomes a problem to decide where to start, what to read, where to go from here. Choice and options always create a problem. Literature, books, videos, websites, well, everything is available, but from where will you start? In this video, we will crack open the doors to general relativity step by step. This won't be just equations and jargons. We will explore the core concepts, the historical context, and even peek at the mind of a genius like Einstein. Along the way, we will encounter black holes, those ultimate monsters of gravity, and see how they bend light and distort time itself. We will chase after elusive gravitational waves, ripples in space-time that whisper secrets across the universe. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to a step-by-step -step approach to general relativity where we will not only learn how to approach general relativity but I am also going to show you why you will learn and the resources and the steps henceforth. So first, before we start with uh, this video, let us learn that how can we learn from the right resource? Because resources nowadays are widely available, but in order to identify the right resource is a problem. So the first thing is that you will see that students, they spend months and years on just deciding what to do, uh, how to do, what are the resources, etc. And they finally end up frustrated. So my advice would be after, you know, teaching general relativity all across would be that do start with some fundamental concepts. Uh, if you do spend a lot of time in deciding and researching, etc., you will never come to a conclusion. So you need to start some fundamental concepts to start with. And you need some physics, some mathematics, some geometry, some obviously sleepless nights, which will be rewarded by some beautiful mornings. And you need to know more than the mathematics. You need to learn a lot and lot and lot of geometry. Now, the question is that uh, why geometry, why general relativity is more of a geometric approach. I will talk later and I have talked earlier in my earlier videos also. But what is most important, you need to understand that more than doing sums, you need to visualize things and have an intuitive approach because general theory of relativity is more of the abstract notions of that. Of, of mathematics. So uh, w w it is often a, a d difficult task for students, especially beginners, to identify which is the right resource to learn. What are the best books to study? How much mathematics should you know? And most importantly, how much time do you need? Because if it is a semester, two years, three years, five years, if you go on learning and learning and learning, then you will see that at one point of time you get frustrated. So obvious question which comes to anybody's mind is that how much time do I need and what are the best books to study? How much mathematics should I know? Because if you keep on learning the mathematics, especially of general relativity, which is very heavy in terms of certain exotic mathematics, you will see you will feel frustrated and there is nothing to go about. And most important, this is the question, is it worthwhile to do this? I am to say, is there a career option? Are there research uh, op uh, options to go? Can I go abroad? Can I migrate into astrophysics, etc.? So these are very common questions which comes. And at the end of the day, you feel frustrated. So th this is that is the reason I have written that it is a never-ending process. If you learn mathematics, if you learn linear algebra, if you start going on around with differential geometry, it is a lifelong process. So the very question that keeps our mind busy is that how long, how long will we go? So but the thing is that you need to start somewhere. So the basic question uh, which I am trying to address in this part of the video is that from where will you start? From where will the fundamental concepts grow? Is it worthwhile to do? What are the mathematics? It is a never-ending process. All these questions will be answered once you, uh, uh, you know, uh, hit the start button. That is from where you will start. So coming up in the next part of the video, the first point, the first basic, I would say, a baby step for learning general relativity coming up in the next part of the video. Now, most of us ignore when we are going to advanced concepts or general relativity, relativistic quantum mechanics, etc., is that we ignore what is called classical physics. 
and that is a big mistake so the first step would be to understand not only classical physics the mathematics but what is called the nature of classical physics i will just uh, tell you first the reason why you need to learn this now you see classical physics obviously is the foundation of all physics and until and unless you learn it properly and with deep profound knowledge it is never going to happen that you are going to learn other areas of physics most importantly general theory of relativity is highly classical in nature i will tell you later what do i mean by classical i am not meaning vectors momentum force torque etc but something different so in order to understand the true nature of general relativity deeply you need to have a very deep foundation of classical physics and as i uh, um, i have written here that the nature of classical physics is very deep and carries a very very profound meaning now what do i mean by that that a profound meaning that means it has classic classical states for example first one state two states multiple states etc infinite states so it actually helps you to define and determine what is called a deterministic reversible system this is very deep this is very profound and this will give you a strong footholdings to understand general relativity also ideal conditions isolated systems when we will learn schwarzschild black holes or schwarzschild radius or when we are trying to uh, i would say uh, make the einstein field equations uh, uh, come down to something very easy and taking certain assumptions these things will help you to understand so what do we mean by ideal condition isolated system that is not interacting with the other system that is very important and that is why i lay full stress upon learning classical physics also you will see that what in general the notion is that classical physics means uh, you know uh, laws of motion where a ball is falling down or a pendulum which is swinging back and forth or the celestial astronomy astrophysics celestial bodies moving around or electricity or magnetism but it is not so classical physics is much much more deeper than this and there is a certain nature there is a nature just like human beings classical physics also has got a nature and this nature actually is the pivotal force uh, i would say that drives the entire formula all the laws of the universe now in order to deal or start with general relativity you need to really understand the importance of classical physics and study classical physics in this sense so when we talk of classical physics we mean that something before the advent of quantum mechanics so it is primarily of newton's equations for the motions maxwell faraday law of electromagnetism and obviously einstein's general theory of relativity so what we find is that it is a set of principles and rules and there is an underlying logic that governs all the phenomena so this is what is called the classical physics now just like this one which you can see the diagram on the left hand side that there is a nature of human being there is also a nature of classical physics just like studying human beings nature we uh, come to note that who is angry who is passive uh, better relationships enhanced communication similarly knowing the nature of classical physics will help us to understand the philosophy learn other branches of science better understanding of this very small that is the quantum world and the very big which is general theory of relativity so the more you know about the big the more you better know about the small the more you know about the deterministic system the more you know about uncertainty the more you know about newton's laws of motion you come to know more about what is called einstein's relativity and general theory of relativity is one of them now having laid down the basic understanding of nature of the classical physics here is my first suggestion that i have already made this video which is quite a detailed one called the nature of classical physics which deals with these topics classical physics laplace demon non local theory spontaneous emission what is system what is also not a system how do you form a deterministic and a reversible system uh what is called isolated system and does it have any re resemblance with what is called a <clears throat> linearized gravity stroboscopic effect space of states everything so i am putting up a link right in the uh, you know video in this video where you will come to know about the first step the very first step to understand general relativity is the nature of classical physics and i have given a very detailed video you are welcome to go ahead and watch that the link is given right at the description now once we have understood the nature of classical physics the immediate next step is that how general theory of relativity evolved 
it just doesn't came out of the blue moon right so it has some kind of a resemblance of what is called special theory of relativity so step number two what you need to know is that evolution of special relativity now what is the reason that you should learn special relativity why not why don't you jump directly into general relativity the first reason is this one because the foundations for key concepts that means the uh, entire mathematics of general relativity space time curvature etc are actually dealt first with special relativity so special relativity gets generalized from an accelerated to a non accelerated system so that is why we need to understand this Point number two is that obviously there is a very important historical context and perspective. Until and unless you understand and clarify the motivation, why it happened, who were the people, what motivated Einstein to form special theory of relativity, you won't be able to understand the historical context and enjoy general relativity. Otherwise, it will be just mathematics and tensor calculus and differential geometry. Third is that every single theory leading to another theory has got a limitation has got its own i would say uh, you know problems that it cannot ex explain certain phenomena similarly there are certain limitations of special relativity uh, accelerated frame and other things which i'm not telling right now so general relativity extends these ideas to incorporate gravity space time curvature etc so knowing and understanding special relativity is very important and finally, I would say the mathematical tools and techniques because you see general relativity as we will explore more in this video, which includes tensor calculus, differential geometry, etc. All have its roots at special relativity. Uh, you might ask me a question that does, does that mean special theory of relativity do have certain tensors? Yes, it has. It has not yet be, uh, not been formulated originally by Einstein, but what we called Faraday tensor and electromagnetic field tensor evolved later. That means the roots or the mathematical tools and techniques are all there in special theory of relativity. So second step, once we understand the nature of classical physics, would we understand the mathematics as well as the evolution, how special theory of relativity came into the world of physics. So here is my video, uh, episode 2, which is called Evolution. And it contains a lot of detailed topics, as you see. Why do we need transformation equations? Because transformation equations started with Galilean transformation, isn't it? So from Galilean transformation, how Einstein took up the special theory of relativity. Before that, why Galilean transformation cannot be done into a Lorentz invariant, all those things I have spoken in this video. So the need for uh, tensors, michelson molly experiment, Lorentz transformation, Galilean versus Lorentz transformation, time dilation, length contraction, all of these things are dealt over here. So it is a very detailed video. Again, step number two, the link is provided in the description. Please go ahead and watch it. You will get a very detailed understanding on not only the mathematics, but the evolution and the need of special relativity from which the next step took forward was general theory of relativity. Now, first step is done, classical physics. Second step, we know special relativity. Now comes the third and the biggest step, I would say, in understanding what is called this one, equivalence principle. Now, this is something which is quite different from in general physics. I mean to say, this is an astounding fact that we find that inertial mass and gravitational mass are the same. I mean to say this is this is one of the biggest discoveries of physics. So equivalence principle is, would be, I won't say the mathematics, but in order to understand the concept is very, very important. Why you need to understand equivalence principle? Number one is that it first united gravity and inertia. So, uh, I mean to say A equals to G, that concept, that acceleration equals to gravity, that concept first evolved in equivalence principle. And I will tell you, that is the root, that is the foundation of general relativity. If you don't understand equivalence principle, it is just like building a brick out of sand, uh, building the house out of sand, and it will immediately collapse. Second thing is that it gives you a very uh, I would say, detailed understanding of the nature of gravity. That it is not as just a simply a force, a fictitious force, which Newton and Galileo thought, and it will just bring things down, but it is the nature of the geometry, it is the curvature of space-time. Third thing is that equivalence principle, if you look into the video which I am coming next, I have cited various researchers from arxiv.org who are doing a lot of new research in order to use this equivalence principle into other frontiers like dark matter and dark energy. So you need to learn this. 
and most importantly here comes the grandfather of mathematics bernhard riemann so it introduces riemannian geometry into the theory that means that matter is not acted on by force but it actually follow what is called the geodesics are actually given first by this equivalence principle. I mean to say the mathematical formulations evolved and evolved and still it is evolving. But equivalence principle first led us to this uh, idea that matter does not move only through force but something which are called geodesics on a given manifold. So when you are learning general theory of relativity you will see these type of pictures 1, 2 and 3. Now, some people say, no, this is not right. This is not mathematically okay. But I would say this is absolutely fine. This is absolutely fine. And these pictures are absolutely fine. Why? Because all these diagrams gives a fairly intuitive and pictorial idea of general relativity. What does it say? It says there is a heavy object, for example, on a bed sheet or something. You put up a lump of a ball and it creates a dent. And this dent creates uh, is uh, directly on a grid. So from these diagrams, what we come to know, if you see the diagram typically in a television or any block of classical physics, what do you see? A pendulum moving back and forth. What does that mean? That there is a deterministic force which will go, evolve into a future force and it will again be given back. Similarly, in quantum physics, you see some kind of an atom uh, uh, which has got, uh, I would say, uh, particles, uh, subatomic particles going around. So what I'm trying to make a point is that, see, all those uh, you know, pictures and uh, I want mean, to say diagrams, they give an idea of what kind of physics we are dealing. But when we look into this, a kind of a, a bed sheet and a sh rubber sheet, which a heavy ball and ca causing a dent, that means that it doesn't show anything related to pendulum or subatomic particles, but it is a pictorial diagram. It is a graphic depiction and it shows more of the physics part. I mean to say more of the geometric part. So this is basically the difference that general theory of relativity is very much geometric in nature. Now, if you ask me what, what geometry should I learn, non-Euclidean geometry, which book to read, I will come to that part later. But what is important it, uh, is this, what causes this kind of a curve and what this picture actually means. I'm coming to this part in order to answer this question. But before that, my kind apologies for making a mistake in the last video which I made. And here I would like to make a correction. In the video which I'm directing to you, I made an uh, error. So if the lift is actually going down and if I shine a, you know, a rectilinear light, which we call, instead of going straight, it will actually go up. So here is the red line which makes a parabola. So this is the, it should be upwards. I have shown it downwards. So I have pinned my comment, apologizing for the mistake that I have made. Similarly, if the lift is, uh, this is downwards movement, right? Now the lift is moving upward. Same rectilinear line motion, then the uh, light would end up somewhere here. That means it will go down and the parabolic curve will be like this. So in a single statement, what we can see that envision a scenario where a beam of light enters the elevator horizontally from the left. Due to the elevator's acceleration, instead of traversing straight path across the elevator, the light beam will seemingly follow a curved trajectory specific parabola. And this is actually what is dealt too much in equivalence principle coming up in the next part of the video. This is my very detailed video on not only the equivalence principle, but going back to the roots like Aristotle, Galileo, and then finding out what is an Gedanken experiment, Atvash experiment. I mean, Sir Laurent Atvash, who first actually created that experiment in order to prove that gravitational mass and inertial mass are the same. And I have also dealt in details with what is called a strong, weak and Einstein equivalence principle. Link is given in the description. Please go ahead and watch it. This is a very, very important concept of general relativity. Without this, the next explorations of the theory would be impossible. So classical physics done, special relativity done, the foundation of general relativity, that is what we called uh, the equivalence principle is done. Now, before going into general relativity, we need to take a step back. Why we need to take a step back? Because all those things, these curvatures, these lines, these grids, the bending of the starlight, etc., are all happening on a surface. And we need to understand this surface because this surface is not an ordinary table, chair, or a Euclidean surface. Step number four is this one. What is a manifold? And I, need, I will just show you in short that why we need to study this concept first. Now, you see that in case that we need to measure the curvature, 
of any surface etc what we need is differential geometry so here you see that in order to uh, measure the lines on a sphere we cannot have a straight line so what do we have a geodesic so we also have differential geometry in order to understand what is called a pseudo Riemannian manifold because you understand what is a manifold we will come to that so in order to understand those lines like torus or a sphere or a positive zero or negative curvature it happens on what is called a Riemannian manifold and in order to understand we need to learn a differential geometry here you see that the shape of the ball is increasing that means it has got a kind of a different curvature so we need to have what is called Ricci curvature tensor that is differential geometry black holes for example uh, the different metric Schwarzschild metric Robertson Walker metric all of those things are actually dealt with differential geometry not only differential geometry general relativity actually is built on the mathematical framework of differential geometry so here you see that these are the curved lines and these are actually those red dots that means if you want to measure from one point to another to another to another what we need is this kind of a manifold typically and this is general theory of relativity so a curved space time if you take and the basic measurement of the causal structure of curved space time is what metric tensor and the Einstein field equation gives much more detail and how do we measure those lines these are geodesic equation so in our, I mean to say all of this actually burns the boils down to this point that the entire edifice of general relativity is built on differential geometry so once you have gone through the classical physics, the evolution of special relativity and what we call the equivalence principle, I would say not to go directly into the mathematics of general relativity, but let us first understand what is a manifold. And here is my video, which I have already made a very detailed video on a beginner's guide to manifold, where I have talked about surfaces and manifold, what is a manifold is manifold only found in mathematics and a lot of things i mean to say different types of manifold a complete understanding of a manifold this video will give you an understanding of that amount of manifold which will make your life easier to understand general theory of relativity again this is step number four and the link is provided so we are going step by step now that we have understood the nature the surface of manifold the next important step is something big and we are waiting for that which is called learning tensors now don't worry I, I, I mean to say when you're learning tensors it is not that you have to solve all those covariant contravariant mathematics no definitely you can do that but in order to understand the concept of general theory of relativity you need to learn some basic concepts of tensor first let me tell you why do you need tensor this is very central our understanding you see the language of space-time whatever the way it is curved bent etc tensors are actually the natural language of space-time that means general theory of relativity the entire language in which it is speaking are based on tensors secondly you see we will talk I, I think you have seen my earlier videos whenever there is a transformation from one coordinate Cartesian to spherical or spherical to any uh, independent Cartesian system then we see, have something which is called tensors are independent that means whatever the way you transfer I mean to say the measurement will always be the same so general relativity is because space-time itself is not fixed so we need an exotic mathematical tool which will give us an understanding of transformation independence also you will see those big equations sometimes become very cumbersome if you write it in their original notation so tensors actually helps us to write in a much more complex i mean in a much more compact way coincise way elegant way all those big mathematical area uh, mathematical equations and also you will see when we do all those types of coordinate transformation which is the central idea if you have attended my uh, live classes i have shown uh, some of them that if when we are changing the uh, coordinates etc tensors do help us because everything changes but the main vector remains the same and that is the crux because we are moving from non euclidean to non euclidean and all those weird i would say coordinates so here is my video where I've talked about tensors as a beginner and these are the very exhaustive topics uh, why tensors history of tensor what is called a rank of a tensor how tensors are unique uh, and most importantly what is the role of tensor in general relativity and Einstein's field equations so it is a kind of a very detailed video which will give you an idea about tensors and how important it is in understanding general theory of relativity the link is provided sequence wise and that is how you do 
so first classical physics then special relativity then the equivalence principle then the surface on what the physics takes place the manifold and then we come to point number five which is called tensors now immediately once we learn tensors the first the foremost thing which comes to our mind is that Einstein field equations are all based on tensors. So why don't we go and learn Einstein's field equation? Absolutely, you are right. And that is the sixth pair step that you are not going to take, that Einstein's field equations. But hold on, I need to tell you why you need to understand Einstein's field equation. First thing is that you know that it revolutionized our understanding of gravity. I don't need to repeat this because this is more or less, I would say, similar. Because Newton's law of universal gravitation, uh, it is replaced by a, a much better picture. Also, the uh, gravitational waves, which actually the Lego and other uh, you know, gravitational detectors are doing. So, this equation actually led to the theoretical foundation and now we are finding evidence of gravitational waves. So, that is very, very important. And the most interesting stuff, which is called the black holes, they gave rise to the theoretical framework for understanding black holes. Also, you will see that Einstein field equations and the, and the extreme conditions actually shaped the entire cosmology. And from there, Stephen Hawking, Roger Penrose, Amal Kumar Chaudhary, uh, uh, Professor Chaudhary, everyone, they, uh, it, it, it reshaped and there's a huge rush of cosmological research from the Big Bang to its current expansion and as well finding out what is the future of this universe. So Einstein field equations look like this. So here there are a few constants like this is a lambda, this is the speed of light, 8 pi is a constant and g is the Newton's gravitational constant. I mean to say these are actually the constants that we uh, deal with all about. But uh, these constants really don't make up the uh, definition of Einstein field equation. These are uh, uh, after all constant which has got constant values. What makes it interesting are this R which is called a Ricci curvature tensor which I'm not going to explain right now. You can watch it uh, later. Also this R which is called the Ricci scalar which also is a measure of the curvature and there's something which is called a G which is called the metric tensor. And then we have got a Riemann curvature tensor, which is a contraction of the Ricci tensor technically here. And then we have got T, which measures how much of stress is caused by the matter. So taken all of this, what it actually shows is that matter and energy component tells how much mass energy exists at a given point. Curvature components tells how much space time will bend or cause a dent uh, by the mass energy. And these equations equate these two aspects showing how much matter and energy actually shapes space time curvature. Well, there are immense amount of literature, huge amount of research as derivation, etc. on Einstein field equation. But here is something very important. I have given a very detailed video which talks about Einstein field equation. If it is symmetric, what happens? What is Ricci? what is metric tensor, what is Riemann curvature, stress energy and many, many more things. So the step number six would be identifying and understanding Einstein field equation. Sequence wise, I have given the, what I would say, the uh, uh, this uh, uh, link and you can go ahead and watch it there. Now the question comes that once we have understood, um, you know, what we called uh, uh, the uh, Einstein field equation, all those curvature, etc. The question comes that can we apply it in the practical life? I mean to say, do, does Einstein field equation at all have a practical application? So here is a very detailed video. I mean to say, you, you have a question that is it theoretical in nature? Can we measure curvatures? For example, right now I'm sitting on a chair. Does it cause a curvature? What are called the solutions for the weak gravity metric? How much is the curvature? What is linearized gravity? And so on. I'm going to say these are very common questions that when we are learning Einstein field equations, why don't we ask ourselves these questions? So here is a very detailed video which is called Practical Applications of Einstein Field Equations, which gives answer to all those questions. Is it uh, practically applicable? What is linearized gravity? Uh, what do we call solutions for the weak gravity metric? Because this is something very important. Not only understanding Einstein's field equation is going to give you the answer. You need to understand what is the practical application and does it have a practical application not at all. So step number seven, again, understanding the practical application of Einstein's field equation, link is provided provided in the description. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Till now, we have gone through 7 topics 
concepts and I have given you the videos. Now, why don't we make a video or why don't we summarize all those things in one single understanding? So, step number eight would be, as I always tell when you're reading books, learning lessons, after you go for a certain step ahead, it is always good to take a step back and summarize whether you remember all those things or not. Not. So here is step number eight. This is a very simplified approach and it's a very detailed video. Don't worry, this is a little bit longer video which contains everything that I have talked till now. Special relativity, flat space, uh, Einstein's tensor, differential geometry, geodesic, how gravity affects the path of light, everything. And this is step number eight. The link is also provided in the description. And if you go step by step, you, will, you are never going to get confused on anything. Now, the last few steps are, I would say, a little bit, I would say a little bit mathematical in nature because you see, Einstein's field equations has got a lot of tensor components. Now, you might ask that, do I need to learn all those tensor components? I would say you can learn, but one tensor component, if you learn it uh, at the very beginning stage, it would be beneficial for you. And that is what is called the metric tensor. Among all those tensors, Ricci, Riemann, uh, uh, curvature tensor, and all those things, uh, I would say Ricci scalar, metric tensor is very important. I mean to say, you really cannot go ahead general relativity without metric tensor. And there is a reason for that. I will just show you in short what it is. First is that this is the most important uh, tensor in general relativity. Why? Because all the measurements, I mean to say angles, curvature, lines, etc., density, everything is actually given in the complete uh, idea of the causal structure of space-time. That is what is called the metric tensor. Also, what it happens is that it helps you to understand the geodesic movement. That means, in general, when you're moving along a curved surface or a sphere, you know, you cannot have a straight line. So you move by geodesics. Now, I'm not saying that you understand the geodesic, uh, you know, uh, geodesic concept right now. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, but yeah, you can do uh, one thing that uh, geodesics are something which is quite explained in, um, you know, I would say uh, the uh, metric tensor. So I would say that this uh, idea of understanding geodesics is also being done what is called through metric tensor. Now, you see most of the thing, as I've shown you right earlier, that there is a rubber sheet analogy, there is a dent, etc. So what is this rubber sheet? Why it is shown so? And why there is a dent, etc., the measurement? All those things are very much clear through what is called metric tensor. Also, metric tensor gives you a very clear idea that how things actually changes when you move from Euclidean to non-Euclidean geometry. And as you understand that metric tensor is the defining factor, uh, you can say the pivotal force which guides general theory of relativity. So yes, this understanding is very good. It is a little bit older video, but very detailed and people have loved it. I mean to say subscribers like you and it is a very detailed mathematical derivation. Everything is there starting from the components, why we need uh, tangent vectors, metric tensor for dummies from Euclidean, how we move to non-Euclidean, metric, calculating the arc length, rubber sheet, everything. So yes, metric tensor would be something very helpful and you will understand that. Taking all those nine components together, now we are at the right stage to make our first step in cosmology or astrophysics and that is black holes. Yes, black holes are important for our learning because they are basically the secrets of extreme gravity. I mean to say gravity when it becomes extreme, uh, they do form right through a star collapse of gravity. So it helps us to understand that. Also, black holes helps us to understand of origin of evolution of other galaxies because we have seen through Reinhard Genzel and Andrea Ghez and Roger Penrose that a huge supermassive black hole SMBH is existing at the center of our Milky Way. So it might also help us to learn more about the evolution of the other universes or galaxies. And because they are extreme, they actually push the boundary to some of the most mind-bending and great theories that we are waiting. And as we know, the theorized primordial black holes formed in the densest regions of the Black Big Bang could and could form what is called the uh, clues to the early universe. So definitely it is very important and I've given a very simplified understanding of black holes for beginners which contains all those topics. I mean to say starting from what is a black hole type. So it's a very detailed video. How does a black hole form? What is Schwarzschild radius? 
uh, does time stop near a black hole? What a rotating, non-rotating black hole? What is uh, the concept of Schwarzschild radius? Everything. And the link is also provided. You can uh, find it out uh, right at the bottom. So these 10 videos and the details actually gives you an understanding of the first step towards general theory of relativity. I have also attached certain very good additional resources which are a little bit mathematical in nature. Number one is introduction to tensor calculus. Uh, I'm sending, I'm putting the link in the description as additional resources you can go. The second is introduction to theory of black holes by the famous Gerard T. Hooft who worked with uh, um, uh, Stephen Hawking. And this is also great, uh, I mean to say, from leadsac.uk, General Relativity by Commissar of SS. It's a wonderful video and uh, you can go through it. So, that, so, so the summary is that all the links sequentially, step by step, all the 10 concepts and the videos are given sequentially in the description box. And these additional resources are also given so that those who are uh, wants to do a little bit more mathematical in terms of understanding, you can go ahead and watch it. So thank you very much for watching this video. I am immensely thankful that there, so that you have taken your time and energy to watch this video. So please do subscribe to my channel Physics for Students and don't forget to click on the bell icon and click on all to get all the notification from Physics for Students. You can always contact me at this. This is my email ID and you can also subscribe to my other channel which I am trying to slowly grow which is called General Relativity Explained and it contains exclusive videos only and only on general theory of relativity. You can also follow me on my Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn uh, channels. Thank you very much. Physics for Students will be soon back with more interesting videos. Please put up your reactions. How do you think the steps they are? And if you want certain additional steps to be incorporated, please do let me know in the comment box. I will be back soon with more surprising and interesting videos. Till then, goodbye.